Hi, today we're just uh, doing a quick video showing how to program a, a new TPMS sensor to a 2015 Toyota RAV4. So when we say we're programming a new TPMS sensor, we're talking about using a universal Tinkar sensor. So these like are universal sensors that sit on your shelf, they fit a huge range of vehicles, but they are blank on um, until you program them or prepare them to fit, to, to suit or to fit the car that you're going to fit them to. So in this case, um, the front left sensor was faulty on this car. Um, so we're after replacing it with one of the tin car sensors. So like I said, that sensor is blank. So the first thing we have to do is program or create the sensor. And once we have that done, then we have to learn it to the car. So, um, we're using the Think Tool Euromax. Uh, the Think Tool Euromax comes with this TPMS wand. There is a slightly newer one that it comes with it now, but the, the operation and the, uh, the the methods are still the same. Uh, some of the other Think Car tools has the TPMS act activator built into the into the unit itself. Like the Master X2 doesn't have this externally; it's built into the tool. And a lot of the other Think Car range that doesn't come with a TPMS wand, some of them you can add it as an optional extra. So from the home screen, then we're going to go into TPMS. Just make sure you have this turned on. Sorry about the flickering here. One of our lights in the workshop is uh, is flickering. So, um, so so we go OK, and now it's searching for this would be a Bluetooth. So we send this available to connect. So we go connect. It's connecting and it's connected up so now we have to choose the region that we're in so we're a um, european market and um you have all your different makes and models here or sorry all the different brands here so today we're on a Toyota. so it's uh, i can search there if i want to but or you can just scroll through it so we're on a rav4 so when you go in here then this is not like diagnostics where you can auto id the car we'll have to pick the car manually um so we can narrow it down by the different year ranges so ours is 2015 so it can't be any of these or that one this one or so it's it's like it's this one now um uh, toyota's toyota's on the sticker in the one of the door pillars normally has the model code stuck on there so you can you can figure out the model code from that ours is this one anyway so we're going in here so yeah like i said we already checked this car we went around with the the, the wandered activator and tested all the sensors and the front left sensor was faulty so we've already replaced that but this front left sensor is a blank sensor so we, we need to create the sensor first. So when we go in here to this screen and we have different options, we can activate the sensors, activate slash test them. Once we do that, it'll, it'll populate these fields and we can look at the ID code, temperature, pressure, battery status, so on. Um, we can read the ECU ID, so that'll bring up the, the IDs that are already saved in the ECU. To do that, you have to have the VCI connected to the OBD port, which we've connected inside. And then you have programming, which is programming a new sensor. It's preparing a sensor so that it can be fitted to the car. And then you have learning. Learning is learning the, learning the new sensor to the car. So we're going into programming. So there's a few different ways we can program a new sensor. We can copy by OBD. So we could read the existing IDs that are stored in the OBD and write them to the new sensor or sensors if you're changing more. Copy by activation is where, for example, if this sensor only had the valve broke and the sensor itself was still electronically working, we could hold the sensor up here and, and press copy. And then this tool will read the data off the sensor and the ID. And then we can write that data to the TPMS ECU. And now because the, the ID code and everything is the same as the old one, then we won't have to learn it to the car because it's all still the same. And then the other option is manual. Don't really recommend this. This is where you have to 
key in the ID from the sensor manually, and especially on an old sensor, it can be very hard to read and very hard to know which which um, which numbers or letters are the are the actual IDs. Um, so if if you can't copy by activation, we normally recommend auto. So auto is where the tool automatically creates a random ID. And now because the random ID, when it's done, then it'll have to be learned to the car. So uh, the learning process to the car then varies from make to, uh, for, for different brands. Uh, it depends on the way the manufacturers do it. Some recommend you, you create a new sensor, you fit it, and then you just drive it for 20, 30 minutes and it learns it automatically. Others, you have to learn it through the OBD like we're going to be doing with this one. Some others, you have to enter into a manual mode and activate the sensors to learn it. And there's various different ways, but that's not because of the tool, it's because of the way the manufacturer wants you to do it. So we're going to go in here. Oh, uh -huh. so this is the idea is going to create a new sensor with. We already have the sensor fitted in the wheel here and sorry so the the bond is waiting for programming so we're just holding it close to the valve and I'm just going to hit programming here so first it's going to test the sensor make sure the sensor is compatible so it comes up here programming please wait And these sensors can be overwritten um, several times. So if you make, if you program a sensor and you don't use it on that vehicle, you can overwrite it and program it again. So now it's after completing the program and, and it's after reading the sensor as well, reading the ID of it. So we have the ID, temperature, pressure, and battery status. So that's the sensor is, is created. So now you could think of this sensor as like a sensor that you would have bought from the from a Toyota dealer. Like, uh, it's like it's it's created to, to suit this make and model like an OE sensor. So now we're after creating the sensor, now we have to learn it to the vehicle. So like with this, it depends on the manufacturer, the, the method for learning it. If you go into learning here, it'll, the tool will have instructions on the learning process. So it depends on the car, some by OBD, some by just driving, some by OBD and activating, and some then of manual procedures. So re, uh, read through all the instructions. I'm sorry, the, it shows you the OE part numbers there. If there's ever any doubt about when you're creating the sensor and if there's a, <clears throat> a crossover with the years or the year range and you're not sure which part number to use then or which one which year range to use then you need to maybe look up the part number the OE part number on the likes of parts link and then make sure you're using the right part number when you're creating the sensor to match the car. So here's all the process. So it's telling us to um, start reading, the, read the sensors. So we start with the left front, right front, right rear, left rear, so on. And then spare if equipped. Um, ensure the pressures are right. Uh, turn the ignition on, connect the TPMS tool and write the sensor IDs to the TPMS ECU. And with the ignition still on, re-trigger the sensors with the tool and then switch off and switch the ignition on and test drive. Sometimes you have to drive a bit for the TPMS light to go off. Um, some Toyotas can have a, I don't think this one has, have a switch inside where you can switch over between two sets of tires. So you potentially could have, like in some countries we don't need it here, where you have winter and summer tires. So the, it'll have uh, two sets of sensors, two sets of tires. So when a, a owner switches over from winter to summer tires, they just flick the switch. 
So you need to make sure um, you have the switch in the right position for the set of tires that you're at. Right, so we're going to go OBD relearning. So connect OBD and turn the ignition on. And now it says, please activate all tires first. So it's, um, we're going to activate them now here with the, with, the, with the wand. So we need to make sure we're on the, on the, the right wheel front left so remember in the instructions it told us to start with the left front front left so we hold it up to the <clears throat> to here it's activating uh, the screen so it's after reading the data off it the screen here would have changed as well as I was reading it so we're on to the front right Okay, thread the dah again off it. Turn on to the rear right. Sorry about the glare. I think there was a sensor already replaced in this wheel. It's um, it's different looking than the rest of them. Um, it's another brand of aftermarket sensor so when I'm trying to read this it's a bit slower of reading than the other ones I know it's changed because all other sensors are metal valve and this one is rubber so right rear I read it then eventually and then we go to the rear left and then we go okay again It's after picking them all up. So it's after reading all four. Now we can go OBD relearning. Please connect OBD and turn the ignition on. Connect to the OBD port, turn the ignition on. So we have the ignition on. Here's our VCI. We go uh, okay, dealer. I was trying to communicate with the vehicle. So it's uh, sending the TPMS data now into the, the data, the ID of the sense, new sensor or sensors into the ECU. I forgot to mention on most Toyotas, when you replace one sensor, when you're learning it you have to learn all four so even though we're only changing one we're relearning the four sensors all together it's just kind of the way they do it so now it's shown us the the tire position the activation id and the ecu id and they're all should be all the same so this is what when we read them, and this is what's stored inside in the uh, TPMS, stored inside in the TPMS ECU. So, okay, sensor learning succeeded. So then, in um, it said in the instructions then that we should activate the sensors again. Um, the TPMS light is out now, and all, but in some cases, if it doesn't go out, you uh, activate the sensors again and by activating them that forces the sensor to uh, to transmit the data so you just go around and activate them again and in other cases then you might have to test drive test drive the vehicle to get the tpms light to go out so so uh, yeah thanks for watching and hope this is of some benefit